How does a successful cooperation between a software and a hardware project look like? Basically, we have two opposing models. In one model, one company, one entity, owns both the hardware and the software part of the project. The great example is the Apple. They own everything and from time to time, well, quite often, they release the new version for which you have to pay. Usually, quite a lot. Let's just call it the Apple model. The second model is the Windows model. In this model, there are multiple independent entities responsible for independent parts of the whole ecosystem. On the one side, we have the hardware manufacturers, hardware providers. And if you want to have the new hardware, you just go to the store and buy it. And on the other hand, you have the software providers, in this case, Windows and from time to time, usually every few years, you do have to buy a new version of the operating software so it can work with the latest generations of the hardware. And of course, both sides of the equation charge you. You have to pay for the hardware and you have to pay for the software. By the way, even if you are using OEM version of Windows, you're also paying. Only the money is not going directly from you to Microsoft, but from you to the hardware manufacturer to the Microsoft. And more or less everything works. Some of you might ask why I'm not talking about the Linux model. Because I do not believe that the Linux model is successful. Because if the Linux model would be successful, Linux would be a multi-billionaire. But he isn't. Why? Well, because nobody is paying for Linux. Just take a look at the sheer number of Linux installations all over the world. If Linux would be paid one cent for every Linux instance, man, he would be a rich man. So no, from my capitalistic point of the view, the Linux model is not a success. Yes, we as the human species cannot live without Linux, but it doesn't mean that the Linux itself is a success from the point of view of the project itself. It's seriously, seriously, seriously underpaid. Disclaimer, yes, I'm a hypocrite. I use Linux. I don't pay for Linux, but well, so does everybody else. Why am I talking about that? Because the situation is extremely similar to the situation we have in the FPV community and the situation we have with the FPV-related software projects. We won't be talking about the Apple model at all, because in the FPV, or rather drone-related world, the Apple model is just realized by DJI. They sell you hardware, they give you software, one big package. Some say those are the best drones in the world. Also, in the RC and FPV hobby, we basically do not have examples of the Windows projects. From time to time, there are, there were some attempts to utilize the Windows model. For example, example, BL Heli 32 or the in-house developed ethos for the free sky radios. But that's basically all. What we are left with are the great examples of the Linux model, which I don't really consider a success. We have Ardu Pilot, which by the way is probably the most successful open source project in the RC and FPV world. We have Express LRS, we have Betaflight, we have iNav, and the whole plethora of different softwares that were designed by passionates to make your life better. Some are better, some are worse, but what connects them is that they were created from the pure passion. Someone saw the problem, someone thought, hmm, I bet I can fix that, and he just fix that. And if the project was successful, then well, the project probably got traction, got new people joining, got new developers, new ideas, and exploded and provided a great value for the community. Basically, every single piece of the software that you use to fly your RC models and FPV drones was created from passion. However, there is an inherent problem with the passion-based projects. The passion does not last. And when I say it, 
I do mean it. Just look at myself. After roughly eight years of developing iNav, my passion is basically gone. I don't really remember when the last time I wrote a single line of code for iNav. Why? Like I said, the passion is no longer here. But the sad element of all of that is that I'm not the only one. Usually the guy who created it, who put a lot of work, passion, effort, sweat, is no longer working on the thing at all. Just take a look at the contributions page in GitHub and see how often we see this pattern. Someone starts to code it, puts a lot of work, a lot of commits, and then the numbers go down, 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 and he's no longer developing this thing for years now. Take a look at me. I'm no longer developing INA for the last year, okay? I'm not really gone. More on that in a completely different video later. Take a look at Betaflight. Take a look at Express LRS. It's a pattern and it's happening all the time. Is it good that the talented people are leaving open source projects? Of course it's not. They have extreme level of knowledge, they have experience, they show that they can create something amazing, and then every single one, with some exceptions, after a few years, they just burn out. There are a lot of reasons for that. Of course, the passion is gone because the passion sometimes is just gone. Maybe they found something better to do. Maybe they just do not have time or something in their life happened. But there is one extremely important element in this whole puzzle. The element that we absolutely cannot forget about and we cannot say it doesn't matter because it matters always. It's the issue of money. How long do you think a successful, talented developer will work for free? Because let's be honest, at the certain point of every project that started from passion, it's no longer a passion, it's a work. Backtracker, discussions, alignment, explaining people that maybe they are doing things wrong and they should start doing this in a better way. The way that the original developer thought it's a good way to do it. Explaining to people that even if they crash, they crashed and they cannot blame anyone. And other tedious elements of running a company without one extremely important aspect, without getting paid. And by the way, donations that some projects or some developers are getting from time to time, no, they are not even close of covering the costs of being a participant of the project at all. And they have a very good proof of that. Just take a look at the Express LRS and the situations from a few weeks ago when someone tried to register the trademark of the Express LRS. And even though the Express LRS is a successful project, it's getting funding, it's getting donations, turned out they were just not able to resolve this issue internally and had to maybe not ask for help, but people got together to help the project resolve this issue. Lawyers do not work for free either. We already know that Ardupilot, Betaflight, Express LRS, INAF, everything you can use for free. You do not have to pay a single cent to the software developers. You only have to pay to the hardware providers because they are giving you something concrete. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, I would rather say it's not good at all. It creates a very asymmetrical relation between the hardware and the software part of the project. Just as the beta flight is unusable without the hardware, the hardware, the flight controllers are also unusable without the software. And yet, only one side of this relation is getting paid. And if you think that the hardware manufacturers are chipping in for the software development, to some extent you are right. Yes, from time to time some hardware manufacturers, retailers are chipping in. They are donating some amounts of money to the software development. How much? Depends. But if you ask me, mm -mm, it's not even close to being a symmetrical relationship. It's rather, please, 
have some. Use it. We are good guys. We are helping you create your project. Only you are making hundreds times more by selling and manufacturing hardware that has value only and only because somebody else works for free. Never forget about this. By the way, I'm not complaining. I knew what I was going into when I started developing INAF. I knew I will never be paid for that. Yes, I got some donations over the years and they were amazing thing that helped me not only to continue working on the INAF, but also to invest in, well, in myself and help me feel better. But the levels of those donations are nowhere even close to, for me to be able to feel that I'm a successful developer of the open source project that helped hundreds of thousands of people, well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little, fly and have a lot of fun. And also helped companies to uh, earn money, help countries fight wars, help drug dealers to smuggle. There are things we software developers have no bloody idea how our work is used. And it's not very happy thought for me, by the way. But okay, if we are talking about the money, let's try to estimate how much money is really worth it. It's extremely hard to evaluate work on the software development and it's very hard to evaluate the, the sheer value of the project. Because um, it's not that simple. It's hard to find a good measure to be able to estimate how much someone should be paid for doing that or there or like, you know, whatever. There is, however, one metric that can be, let's say, guesstimated to figure out how much a developer can be paid for their work if they were fully employed somewhere on the company. Like, I don't know, nine till five work. And it's the number of commits. Sometimes commits go one after another. Sometimes you spend multiple hours working on the single line of the code that will result in the commit. But with my practical experience over the last 20 years of being a successful commercial developer, I can guesstimate that one commit equals roughly one hour of work. So if I earn $100,000 yearly, that means one commit of mine should cost around 50 bucks. I should be paid 50 bucks for a commit. It's just an estimation. It's just a number. Just use a different value and we're gonna have completely different amounts at the end. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I earn around 100,000 bucks in my nine till five and I would like to be paid accordingly. And now with this number of 50 bucks per commit, let's try to guesstimate how much those popular RC and FPV related projects should pay their developers for their work. I took some numbers for the last six years. That means for the Express LRS, Betaflight and INAF, I checked how many commits were committed to the main branch of those repositories. By the way, I'm talking only and only about the firmware, not the INAF configurator, not Betaflight configurator, not Express LRS configurator, just the C code that runs on those flight controllers, receivers, etc. Since the beginning of the 2020, the Express LRS got around 2,000 commits. Betaflight got around 4,000 commits and INAF got around 7,000 commits. This is just the last six years. That means that the Express LRS should be able to pay their developers $100,000 for their work. Betaflight should be able to pay their developers for their work in the last six years, I'm looking at the number, $200,000. And INAF should be able to pay $350,000. Do you think that any of those projects in the last six years combined, not per year, just combined, 
got anything close to the numbers I just gave you? Like $350,000 for the INAF in six years? Um, no, nobody got that much. Uh uh, uh uh, it never happened. And since I know how many commits I put into the main INAF repository, I know how much I should be paid. A hundred thousand. Did I got a hundred thousand? Of course not. I think I shared whatever I wanted to share with you to give you a brief summary of why, well, the projects do not last that long and if they last, the rotation in the maintainers and the developers is uh, quite severe. This is only, I believe, one of the reasons that the RC and FPV hobby is not really looking like it could be looking. Because there are a lot of things that we can can be done in the software. There can I can envision very amazing features for everything, for Express LRS, Betaflight INAF, Ardu Pilot, like amazing experience, amazing functionalities, only and only if those projects would be able to just, just work as the small enterprise, to take responsibility for their work, to be able to pay developers, to get uh, developers when they are required, to just to hire stars, so so that everyone feel appreciated enough. Because feeling the appreciation, both the, the, the psychological appreciation from the, uh, from the environment, from the, the community that is around the project, and also the financial one is, uh, is a very important uh, aspect of all of that. I, I consider myself of the relatively wealthy man. I have a good job, I'm paid well, my situation is, uh, is solid. I don't really look for more money around me. I don't need money at the moment. I have more than enough. However, it would feel extremely well if I knew that my involvement in the RC and FPV hobby be compensated not only by the kudos. I appreciate kudos a lot. If you want to give me kudos, just give me kudos. But I don't know. Maybe it would look different for me and for INAF and for anything else if the developers just got paid a fair share for a fair amount of work? Well, who knows? It's something to think about. This was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spechalski. Thank you very much for watching. And, like always, happy flying? Happy coding? Who knows? Bye. Ooh. I hope that looked professional. Ugh, boy,